Hey, this is you here from No Stick Creative. Today we're gonna cover another project by Chromosphere Studio called Forms in Nature. We're gonna learn how to design the butterfly shot using Adobe Illustrator and composite it in After Effects. This design tutorial will be taught by my friend Nessa Tomaselli, a motion designer based in Los Angeles, who's really into illustration, filmmaking, and visualizing science fiction through motion design. As gratitude for helping me with this tutorial, I'd like to give a shout out to his award-winning animated film slash musical narrative, Spanish Flowers, done for Flim, an underground hard rock band headed by legendary musician Jerry Nestler and Pancho Tomaselli. The film has showcased in galleries and won multiple awards at film festivals this year, such as the Independent Short Awards and the Venice Film Fest. It has also been selected to play in this year's Elliot Shorts Festival, a prestigious BAFTA and Academy Award qualifying festival, you can watch Spanish Flowers in the link in the description below. And without further ado, let's get on with the tutorial. So hello everyone, good morning. I'm uh, Nestor Tomaselli. Uh, thank you Desmond for the wonderful introduction. And I'm very grateful to be here at No Sleep Creative. So today, uh, what we're gonna be showing you is how to recreate this uh, beautiful frame from Forms in Nature, thinking from design philosophy up. So by that, I mean how the creators of uh, Forms of Nature, Chromosphere Studios, how they thought about this frame design-wise, and then how they went about creating this frame. Um, so let's get to it. All right, so I'm right here on Illustrator. As you can see, I have the uh, uh, a screenshot of the actual frame from the video, and I have backwards engineered it to see really what shapes composite this frame. So for that, if we go here and toggle our transparency, we will see really that this whole composition is made up entirely of circles, basic shapes, triangles, squares, but mostly in essence circles, right? Full circles, semicircles, and they're all derivative from each other's diameter. So what does this uh, bring me to the first point, right? To think about uh, design as sort of a philosophy rather than something that you're trying to, you know, that maybe you see a picture and you're trying to replicate that picture instead of going through the thinking process of, okay, what do I want to achieve with my design? Uh, you know, why am I putting these shapes where I'm putting them? Uh, why am I putting uh, these shapes in juxtaposition to other shapes? You know, it's really about thinking uh, about that process and having it all the time in your mind to be as efficient as possible and for your design to come out as clean as possible. So if, if we um, toggle back and forth between the main image and this uh, design guide, we will see that there's a lot of parallels, right? Between the shape of the butterfly and the shape of the flower. The flower, when you really remove all the fluff and all the petals and all the details, it's just another circle. And it's a circle with the same radius and same diameter as the uh, main body of the butterfly. And then other shapes, like you see these bulging shapes of the wing here, those are other circles that are just combined with a triangular shape. Um, and then you have like the plants in the background, you know, they're really just semicircles. Uh, they're, they're really just circles cut out into the shape of semicircles and then molded out into leaves. Same with the, the flowers in the background, they're just half circles, you know? And if you watch the, the entire uh, rest of the animation, which I will pull up, everything is a match cut with everything else, with elements from the micro realm of our animal kingdom on earth and the macro realm of space, right? So it brings this whole unifying concept of the circle as the form in nature that binds everything um, together. You know, everything is a descendant of everything else via the circle. And uh, it's why this animation is just so wonderful because it teaches uh, not only, you know, uh, design through its, its, its beautiful and clean visuals, but it also teaches us about science and about the forms that inhabit uh, our cosmos and inhabit our animal kingdom. So as, uh, I'm here bringing up the sketches that the actual Chromosphere team did for this, uh, for their storyboard process for Forms to Nature. Uh, and you can find all of these wonderful resources in their actual page at chromosphere-la.com. And uh, Kevin Dart, who was one of the main creative directors and the storyboard artist on this, you can see the beautiful, even, even at, the, at the storyboard level, which storyboards are, you know, regularly just rough sketches, even then how beautiful just this handcraft is and how precise with using all of the circles as a common element that's binding all of this together and sort of blocking main ideas out. Uh, this part of the process is always, of course, incredibly important because it helps to just throw and, and uh, just blurt out all of the ideas you have in your mind and then begin to organize and begin to 
take out the shots that really do work and the shots, uh, sorry, take out the shots that don't work and keep the shots that really do work and then refine those little by little. So we, we see here in his thinking process that now that he has all these like main circle shapes um, nailed together that he brought from the sketch, now he begins to refine them. And we see here the one with the butterfly, which is the one that we're doing, right? How he uh, molds out that basic circle shape, puts it at the center and then puts the flower uh, right below it. And so here we have the, uh, the body of that put into graphic design and refined even further to be made into a final frame. So let's see. So now uh, that we have the design guide down and you can see you know, sort of what are the uh, main bones, the basic structure of this with all the basic shapes also that are gonna be in compri comprising the details right uh, over here at the top right. Now we're going to see how the actual frame was built. So here we have a, the main frame uh, done in Illustrator uh, for our design breakdown. Okay, so I, uh, I, let me make something clear. Chromosphere did their frames in uh, Photoshop, which I think actually aided their design beautifully because if you look at their frame, their butterfly frame, it is not exactly 100% geometrically perfect. You know, like the rhombus, rhombus here is a little bit off center um, and as well as uh, some other of the elements are because Photoshop does not offer you, um, it, it's, not, it's not as geometrically precise in its measuring tools as is uh, Adobe Illustrator. So therefore, I went into Adobe Illustrator just to get that extra edge of precision and also to better see, okay, what are the, the, the exact ratios and the exact measurements that bind this whole thing together. And I'm going to be toggling back and forth between the design book and this uh, finished frame here. If we see, I color coded the circles here and made them a bit, a little bit bigger, you know, orange pertaining to the orange body of the butterfly, pink pertaining to the flowers. And you can see that every circle is in a, um, it's, it's at a, at a, at a different ratio of all the other circles, you know, they, they are sort of um, in equal number going down, right? If you if you compare them, uh, and that's just something that binds that binds everything together much better, and that kind of is able to keep your mind straight, and it's able to keep your your mind focused on what are the exact measurements as you go through with this. So let's toggle everything back and forth just to see how this was built. So let's see. Let's start off by the hero butterfly. And also let's toggle out the background. All right, so let me also pull out my, uh, one of my uh, references that, that I had, picture references, because if we're going to be talking about forms in nature, it's also good to be looking at nature itself, right? And so here, there is a picture of a monarch butterfly. Here, perfect, on a side profile view, right? we can see that even in nature, like the figure of the circle is uh, prominent, you know, and that's just exactly what Chromosphere was trying to replicate. Uh, they, of course, in their design, you know, think, think about design a little bit like animation as well, where you want to exaggerate the proportions you want the audience to see to get your point across, right? So we can see here that uh, this upper wing of the butterfly is a little bit, it's, it's, it's bigger. It's almost the same uh, sort of, diameter as is this main circular lower wing, right, of the butterfly. Uh, but Chromosphere in their frame, they actually exaggerated more because they want the circle to come out. And also they, they rounded off the head a bit more, even though this is not a perfect circle, you know, here it is a perfect circle because that's what we want to emphasize. That's, that's how we want to be thinking design-wise. And then obviously this figure, which you see, it's more like an organic looking triangle. It's, it's a perfect triangle here or almost perfect because there is this edge right here. Um, so when we go into our design process, right, we're already thinking about all that and we're starting to make, um, we, we, the, way, the way I thought while I was backwards engineering Chromosphere's, uh, Chromosphere's frame, right, it's to build from the bottom up, right? It's like you're building a foundation, like a pyramid, right, where you start with the biggest foundation first and then you build up, 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 up until you have the top of a pyramid with all of your like finer, smaller details and then your big uh, figures, big shapes, circles, all of that at the bottom that make the design looks solid, look like it's based on something and not, not, and don't make it look like it's just vector or it's just shapes kind of thrown together. Everything has cohesion, right? So let's see, let's start first by the main body, right? This is how I started laying out the circle, right? The same way that it's here on this design guide, right? Laying out the circle for the, for the butterfly body. And then out of that, right, making uh, other, bigger details before moving on to the smaller ones. So what do I mean by bigger details? 
these exactly, which are the big geometric shapes that are inside of the biggest geometric shape being, being the circle. And even this, you know, uh, even a circle like this, you know, which can trouble a lot of uh, beginner designers, you know, like how do I get a circle that's like, you know, perfectly in line with the other circle and all of that. Um, well, it's very simple. Let's just do that real quick. So to replicate a circle like that, right? And so it follows the exact curvature. It's as easy as using the Pathfinder tool, making sure this is a blacker color. It's not the exact black color, as you can see. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we will do it like that. And uh, make sure you duplicate this top circle. Let's see. Wait, hold on. Make sure you duplicate this top circle too. And then them out in a pathfinder. Yeah, so now we have the perfect circle like that. And then of course you can use the same technique to make that solid edge on the other side, which if you can think of an imaginary square, that's essentially the cutout right here. And imagine not an imaginary square, sorry, an imaginary rectangle. So, so essentially you use like three circles to kind of use the third circle to kind of trim away what you don't need and maintain the design that you want, right? Using exactly. pathfinder. Exactly. Uh -huh. So all so all the time, like while you, you're seeing these main shapes here, right? You also have to train your mind, right, to visualize the third shape that isn't there, which is like the cutout point, right? So in this case, since it's all based on circles, right? Here it's uh, it's like there is this one circle here. There is this uh, 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 quarter moon circle here, right? But then there's also the imaginary third circle that's intersecting these, right? And it's it's same here. Like even though this isn't a full circle, it was based off of a circle, right? And that's that's essentially how we start kind of building and molding things until they look like the geometric version of the butterfly. So let's see. Now that we have the body in place, right? We can start adding. We can start adding the big details inside of the body, right? So now, these are all the the series of of veins and stuff that intercross the um the what is it that all crisscross around the body, right? But if you if you really look at it, right, removing all of these extra rods, which we don't want to look at right now. Oh, well, we do want to look at those. Um, it's really just a collection of triangles. It's a it's a collection of triangles, um, geometrically placed and geometrically shaped to look like the butter the butterfly patterns, right? To just look like geometric versions of those butterfly patterns. So it's it's essentially like. Um, there is a, I, I don't know what, what the technical uh, word for this in, uh, is in Illustrator, Desmond. Maybe you can enlighten me. But think about when you grab a shape on Illustrator, right? And you soften, you have the edges soften, right? Let's say this is closer to, um, closer to real life, right? With the butterfly having rounder edges on its patterns. Essentially what, how your mind is translating from the reference in real life to the, uh, uh, through your eyes and into the computer, it's making this all the time. It's making square edges, right? You're making square edges out of the organic edges, right? That's also a key part of the of the graphic design process that went into this animation. Um, so after that is done, like kind of you have the, the next level of detail, right? Then we can move on to the finer level of detail, which is these fa finer lines that pop in. So now it's almost starting to look like a computer chip, right? Uh, ironically so. Uh, it's it's kind of dabbling between that uh, creature of nature and that uh, and like a, a cybernetic chip, which is just really cool. It it aids to the to the design and makes it that much more stylistic. So now that we have that uh, main body, let's pull ourselves back from like adding more details and look at the next big chunk of this bu butterfly's body, which it, are the wings. Right. So now here we have the wings, and like I was saying, you know, if you really think about the the shape, it's just you know, a triangle and two circles. You know, let's actually do something really intelligent. I'll just copy. Right. So I'm going to have this. I have this over here. And let's toggle the transparency. Right. So there you can see, again, you know, only basic shapes, only basic shapes. And now when we start adding details, to this uh, to this wing, it's essentially the same process as the uh, as the body. 
So inner wing details, you know, these are like just the just the lines and stuff. Uh, we also have the um, what is it? The wing, the, the bigger wing details, which are again just triangles, repeated triangles, and then we can start adding the more finer details, which are just lines and dots, essentially, just lines and dots. Just think of those two basic shapes for the outer edges, right? We see the, the lines, which are made to mimic, again, the sort of ridges, the imaginary ridges here between these spots on the monarch butterfly's wings. And then you have dots, just kind of the, the smallest circle in the hierarchy of circles that we have for this design, right? And so we have dots, a pattern of dots here for the side of the wing with little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot, little dot, little dot, as they're getting closer to the edge, right? And then uh, just one simple little dot for the eye. And also I wanna make a, a point real quick here. As you can see, there are some uh, figures and some shapes uh, kind of um, pushing out and and out of the out of the line, kind of breaking this this pattern of perfection. That's why you can get rid of these edges, these sort of extraordinary edges here, uh, with one of two ways: either using an alpha mat on After Effects, which is I which is what I use, which essentially, uh, let's say, if you were to alpha mat this, and I can get more detail more into detail in After Effects, if you were to alpha mat these shapes onto this. The alpha mat is going to take the information of this shape, and it's going to use it as a mask. So anything outside the mask is going to get caught cut off, right? So if you just want to do it everything from Illustrator, you can use the Shape Builder tool and the shortcut is Shift N. Uh, the way the Shape Builder tool works, right, is uh, you have to have selected, think again of alpha matting, right? You have to have selected the main body of information that you want to cut off those like finer edges that are just sticking out to cut off that information that, that you don't need. So I want this shape to be cut, right, with the contour of this circle kind of like uh, how it's here, right? So the way I do that is I, I select the, the shape that I want to get cut. And I also select my main body of information, which is the uh, orange part of the butterfly's body. And then I hold Alt until you can see that the uh, negative sign turns on behind the, uh, below the mouse and I click. And then I grab this other one right here. And then I do the process again, uh, holding down command to select both the finer triangle and then the bigger circle, hold alt down, and then I hit that little shaded spot and I click. And then you can, you can see how um, uh, you can just start refining everything from Photoshop, from Illustrator, and without having to do the alpha mats in After Effects. So now that, and you can also apply this, by the way, to strokes. It's not going to be as, um, as perfect. Uh, it's going to cut it down to kind of where the where the computer can estimate the best, uh, the closest to the uh, contours. So shift and so and also and also for a uh, higher efficiency, right? Uh, we can also just uh, so for example, how do I get out rid out of all of these protruding points in all of, in all of these lines really quickly? Well, instead of selecting deselecting, we can just hit the main figure that we want the contour from, and then select all of the lines that are protruding, and just holding down Alt. We can click on the protruding point and click, 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 click. And there, we have it clearly cut. You can see there is, it's not 100% 100, 100 perfect, right? Like with this line over here, but that's something you can simply take care of using an alpha mat in After Effects if you, know, if you want to be extremely perfect about it. So, oops, let's get rid of you real quick. Boom, and then shift end. And there. So now, now that we have our main frame built here, we can add the very, very fine details, with, which um, these, if you analyze here on this frame, right? And this is already about uh, thinking ahead into how we're going to composite in After Effects. Pretty much the only things that move out of the butterfly that are not the wings are the uh, antenna and the legs, right? And, they, and, and the sucker as well. And they just move very, very simply, right? So, um, I pre-composed these here just to have as reference in After Effects, you know, because kind of if if I did it all in Illustrator and then just had like a hovering uh, a body of a butterfly with no legs and suckers and antennas, it was just kind of going to look weird. So I did the the legs and the antenna of the butterfly just to have as a reference for After Effects, and then I redid those in After Effects as shape layers, uh, just to um, just so I can I can be able to manipulate 
the uh, the the finer points of the shape, or uh, in this case, so Desmond will be able to manipulate the finer points of the shapes and all of that when he's animating uh, step by step. So, but here, as you can see, the shape of the of the legs of the butterfly is just two main two main very simple shapes: a rod, right, and a triangle, skewed as needed to fit the the sort of proportions of the leg, and then. We can see the same thing is done here with the with the bigger legs on the back there. It's just the triangle is just made bigger and thicker and more obtuse and the rod is made longer. So it's not it's not um if you really think about it, you know, when when again, you know, you remove all the details and you just start with the basic shapes, it's uh it's really just a bunch of simple shapes put together in order around uh, uh worshiping around the circle that is the butterfly. So then we let's see, we activate leg, leg. And now we have, oh, why can't I find the legs? Oh, there it is. So there's the other leg and the other leg. And then, oh, we had these other wing lengths. I forgot to activate, but now you can see them. Um, and now let's go farther back. We have the antenna and the sucker, right? Which antennas are just, you know, two simple lines as well as is the sucker, just one simple line. So uh, if we want to look at this again, one more time, Again, all it essentially is is just one main circle with two other smaller circles to form the um, the round contours of the wing and then the triangle for to form the main body of the wing. right And we can see um, we can see all of all of that again by re by removing the details and just focusing on what's the main shape, right It's kind of like having x-ray vision. So now that um, so now that the butterfly is done, right? Let's focus on another on the other really really cool second biggest shape, which is the uh, which is the flower. So um, um, for the main flowers, you can see here that I've uh, brought up some references provided by Desmond's beautiful home of Singapore. This is actually a flower native uh, to Singapore, uh, and it's kind of the closest thing we found that resembles the the flower in forms in nature. And again, as you can see, removing all of these intricate organic patterns, you know, we start to see the main geographic shape of this flower, right? Which, you know, we first see the circle, which forms a contour outline. And then we start to see sort of, okay, what are the bigger shapes uh, derived from this flower, right? Beginning with the center. So think of the center. If we're going to think of like a blooming flower in spring, we can think of a, of a um, kind of a box that's opening and it's, and it's unfolding in front of us, right? And the way the uh, folks at Chromosphere did it, which is actually brilliant, and it's very, very simple when you when you think about it, uh, it's just basically first a square, then a smaller square, and then a square that's of the of the color of the first square. Let me remove this. That's of the color of the first square, but flipped on its axis and made just slightly smaller, right? Than the previous square, uh, small enough so that it the points uh, stick out a little bit at the at the sides of it. So then the square. Of course, following in that same line of thinking, right? The square of, of the color it was before, and then but made straight again, and then a square of a lighter tone of the previous one, but flipped again on its head now. So it just it's just touching the inner contours of this square. And then for finer details, right? We go again from big to small. From finer details, smaller squares at the tip of this diamond to kind of bring highlights to the tip. Of the of the center of the center of the flower, and then just adding more final details with this green, with these green triangles. So um, so essentially, this is the this is the center of the flower. There is also the back plate of the flower, which I have right here. And if we analyze the back plate, it's pretty much the same thing. You know, you have a bigger square, then you have another square flipped on its axis. This one, of course, it's bigger. It's almost the same shape as the outer the the same size as the outer square. Um, and these points are sticking way out, kind of to to have that sort of solid backplate um, in front of this uh, central composition. And then same process repeated again, just way simpler with less squares. Um, and yeah, and you have this beautiful geometry here, which kind of it's almost like a like it almost feels like a spiral, bringing us in, um, having the unifying shape of the circle on the outside. Then there's just this other rod to kind of hold the flower, um, hold the flower up. And then uh, we go to the petals. So let me go to the design guy real quick. Here, as you can see, I had the, the very basic shapes of the center of the flower. And then if you think about the petals, again, it's just, um, it's just triangles, right? 
for the outer smaller smaller petals, it's just a shrink up triangle, and then for this big petal, it's just a triangle with a point inverted downwards, right? So uh, if now if we if we analyze the petals that are um, on the outside of the flower, right? We see, you know, let's first think of the four petals that intersect these diamonds. Also, like think about it like this too. These shapes here are not only here for decor, right? They're not only here for to look pretty or for fun. They're also here to inform the finer details, right? And and they almost serve as guides to help us know where to place these flowers, right? So if we analyze the first four main rods, right? We already have two, uh, the rod that's holding up the flower here and the rod up top, right? And we can see already like, oh, okay, uh, they are all intersecting these main squares um, that already exist and that we already made setting up for a base. That's why, again, you don't wanna start immediately like doing all the final details uh, and, and getting excited and rushing to the end. You have to start from the beginning and you have to start setting the base and set the main blocks first before you move on to the finer details. So now that we set those, now we can see those four basic rods are pretty much like a compass, right? Pointing at all the cardinal, cardinal points outwards and just again, informing us about the unifying concept of forms in nature. Um, and now that we activate all these finer details, right? we can see that these were placed with three in between each of the four main ones. Right, three in between at the top. And then becoming more sparse at the bottom with two in between the main rods at the bottom. And now after that, we move to the finer rods, which instead of being th three shapes, we move to two. Um, and also think about it like this in terms of graphic design. The farther an object moves out in space, you know, the less shapes it requires. <coughs> to, so since these rods are up front, right, they have three shapes. These rods are in the back, they have two shapes, right? That way we don't clutter the eye with too much detail and everything looks like we, we have a simulated uh, sort of depth happening here with these rods um, interlocking in between these main rods. So now, we have that, and now we can add the, the last finer details, which are these petals, right? And these petals, as you can see, they, they are at a different perspective. They are facing us rather than facing to the side. So you can think of these petals as essentially these uh, back petals that are looking outward. Uh, these ones are looking toward us. So they're going to have the full five star-like petals of the flowers plus the center looking at us, right? It's like an interesting, it's an interesting shift in perspective. And then we have these extra details, which are just these other petals to kind of give it uh, a, a, a more of a simulation of depth. And you can also think of these as like closed petals of the flower for these diamond shapes here. So let's see. Now, moving on to the background, um, let's first pull up these two main flower designs, which again, you know, looking back on our design guide, they're just more circles, right? They're the same star shapes that we see here, but made smaller, oops. These main star shapes that we see here, but just made smaller and arranged into a circle formation with a wider circle, a wider circle up front and a smaller circle at the center with these lines and these rods kind of unifying everything together. So, and now for other details, we have essentially twigs that are holding the whole design composition together. As you can see here, it's just all blurred out. And then in between those twigs are the leaves. And the leaves, if you really think about the leaves to make it less complicated, they're essentially circles, right? Let's just copy paste this here real quick. They're essentially circles skewed into the form of leaves, right? So now that we remove, we toggle the transparency here, we can see, ah, we can see how they are all interlocking circles, right, as well. So let me toggle this out. And then you have, all, of course, like minor details, which are just leaves repeated and copy and copied all around to kind of make more texture in the background, which then in After Effects is gonna be blurred and then more twigs. And then after that, it's pretty much left with uh, the landscape. It's just a color of the sky in the background. And then just some basic ovals, right? So just to tie it all in, again, we can see here the main shapes of everything, uh, big circle with inner triangles for the main butterfly, and then two triangles and a rod for the, for the butterflies in the back, and then everything else, you know, being the geometric equivalent 
of nature, forming this whole composition that you see here. Now, um, I know there are other like smaller, finer details, as you can see, like circles in the back here for these uh, plants, for the for the veins of the plant and all of that. Those, and then textures for the butterfly and then these sort of this cell pattern. This is all that we're going to uh, finish up and we're going to um, do part of it in Photoshop and do part of it in After, in After Effects and do the main whole compositing for lighting and finishing in After Effects. So let's go right on to it. All right. So right here, we're looking at the main frame, uh, Chromosphere's uh, main footage for Photoshop. Uh, and so essentially the process that I did here uh, for finishing and minor details that then are going to be transported into, um, into After Effects is uh, I, I did the main textures and some of the lighting effects just to get that, to get these textures here that are, that are only replicable really with uh, Photoshop, uh, different custom Photoshop brushes. And you can use many different kinds of brushes too. Uh, I prefer to use ones that are by the artist Dan Lovisi. He's like a really, really good graphic artist in uh, DeviantArt and also on Instagram. And his brush pack is for free. And it contains a lot of different textures that I use to just replicate this texture design here. And let's see, I'm going to start to activate that, as you can see, with this reference toggle here. So let me toggle back and forth the transparency, right? As you can see, it's just, um, let me see, it will work best if I have a paint bucket. Let me put you guys in the dark. So there we go. So as you can see, the textures are just a bunch of um, uh, dots and uh, uh, it's, it's the brushes essentially uh, that I use. And then there is this smooth um, blurry brush that is for the light lighting edge, right? To get that kind of, to get that kind of really, really soft detailed glow that you can't really pull off just by using feathered masks in After Effects. Um, I did it by kind of painting over and getting that nice sort of warm morning glow uh, that's on the butterfly. You can you can do that. You can do it um, using feather mask and after effects again to just to get more precision, just to get that finer level of detail. I went in with the brush and I did that and then transported this onto after effects. So uh, yeah, let's go on to the final part of the process. All right. So now here you can see my final composited frame in uh, in after effects with all of the layers color coded just to make it easier uh, for whoever is animating, in this case, my friend Desmond. Now, uh, something you really wanna keep in mind uh, when you're working on After Effects is organization, naming, everything, especially when you're working with others and not working on a project on your own. Organization, naming, color coding is just key. So no layer is like strewn around. So everybody can know, and you can also know where to find your layers immediately. Um, as you can see, I've named everything here kind of on a hierarchy, right, with uh, rods named uh, bigger, you know, for this flower, for this flower specifically, you know, uh, flower rods that are in the front are named differently from flower rods that are on the back, and they're color coded as well. One color, um, as opposed to like the butterfly here, which is colored its own color orange, um, then the butterfly on separate on a separate color hierarchy, and so on and so forth. So let's deconstruct again because really the here with photo the, the thing here with photoshop is uh getting the lighting right so let's go turning let's go turning these layers on one by one right laying down the main blocks first so for the sky as you can see it was just solids with masks um put over them and with a very very uh very steep feather a feather of 732 pixels so it's very very soft very feathery so you can achieve that lens effect, right? With the butterfly in front being the most sharp and then the sky in back being just kind of these amorphous blobs that we see here, right? As if we're, as if we're looking through the lens of a camera, right? Then we get the sun in the background. There's a sun in the background and there's a sun in the foreground, which I will toggle at the end so you can see the difference in lighting. And the sun in the background is uh, on hard light mode to kind of accentuate, right? Accentuate the light and make it hazier. Uh, now we start getting into the plants, which I brought from Illustrator, right? And as you can see here, they're sharp there as they were back here, right? But in the main composition, right, I put a bunch of different blur effects. Uh, I'm not sure exactly, and Desmond, maybe you can enlighten me, as to what was the exact plugin that uh, the Chromosphere team used to get their blurs down straight. Uh, because if we look at this, you can see they have this very like beautiful knitted blur that is very, very, very much similar to the blur of a camera that creates 
kind of two uh, shapes. Yeah, so for, I'm not exactly sure which plugin they use. They could have used like the, the default like After Effects uh, camera lens blur. So that's one option, uh, which kind of use a lot of heavy processing power. Another alternative is like, it's a little bit pricey. Uh, it's a third party plugin called uh, Out of Focus by, I don't know how to pronounce it, Fritsch Love. Yeah, so, uh -huh. that's, mm -hmm. so that's something uh, you know, people can look into if they have a budget to purchase uh, third party plugins. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. There's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of ways to replicate this blur because if you when you really start like, you know, when when you when you really start looking into it, you see that you know there is there is just certain uh, types of blurs that uh, Adobe's default uh, will replicate, like Gaussian blurs and Fastbox blurs and all that. They won't really give you this effect unless you use a combination of them, right? And you tune the variables like just precisely to get it right. Uh, but here, I, I not only use Fastbox Blur and Gaussian Blur, I used also Fast Bokeh, which gives you more control, right, as far as manipulating these outer edges of the shape and making those outer edges blurrier, right? Let me just toggle these. So I used a layer of Gaussian Blur, a layer of Fastbox Blur, just kind of get it, get it, get that, get that feeling of, of looking through, um, Looking through, uh, what's what's that? What's the type of glass called that has kind of a film over it, that everything is blurry? Do you know uh, what the? Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about, but uh, I don't I don't know what to call it. I don't know what to call. Um, frosted glass. Frosted glass. Yeah, yeah. Yes. There we go. There we go. Uh, adding this, adding this fast box blur effect, giving it just a, it's just a blur radius of five um five pixels. Because remember, fast box blur is extremely powerful. Uh, especially with this these finer rods, right? You have very little control. So just be just be careful with it. Uh, I use a, a layer of Fastbox Blur to kind of get that uh, frosted glass feel, uh, and then fast bokeh just to bring out the blurriness of these edges even more. And as you can see, see there, I'm just toggling fast uh, fast bokeh right now using the depth map layer uh, of the curves that are set on top. Um, and this really just what it does is it brings out the blurriness of the edges, nothing more. But when it, it's composited with the other elements, it looks really nice. Um, so now we bring in the uh, flowers in the background, right? And then the twigs and the other elements. And as you can see, I've already applied blur to all of these. It's essentially, um, I just copy pasted the uh, same effects from this panel onto the other shapes. Um, and and I and I took away and I manipulated uh, the variables and the effects. Oops, and the effects that needed to be manipulated um, depending on the shape uh, that that I was on. You know, just to get uh, just to get you know the background elements, the ones further away, more blurry. And as we're moving closer in C space, they become less blurry, and and these numbers start to go down essentially. So now we add. Here are the. Um, other finer details I added in After Effects, right? Like these shadows of, of leaves, uh, which are essentially cutouts of these other leaves uh, and put on alpha. If we see it without the alpha, it's just a triangle, right? But when we put the alpha and we take the information of this leaf behind, boom, we get a shadow. And then we composite that on in, uh, in front. Um, so now we get these other leaves, which then again, just to go into real quick detail, uh, I did these um, plant details here on After Effects, which are the veins of this uh, of this plant in particular. So here you can see it's just four main lines kind of uh, forming the ribs of that leaf, right? And then they're put into alpha mode, right? So here without the alpha, I grab the a, a duplicate of this plant that I want to use the information from, and I put the alpha, and now you can see the composite coming together, All right? And then I put it in the background and then I blurred it out a little and that makes just the details kind of mold and mesh better. So they're not standing out too much. Um, then, so when you're playing around with alphas, uh, it's really important to remember hierarchy, right? Uh, to remember what goes in front, what goes in back. And then again, the more organization you have, you know, from the start, the better, because then it's going to make all of those finer details uh, just solve themselves easier. So plant twigs, let's see. So now we have um, these butterflies here in the background. And as you can see, there is a whole swarm of butterflies in the final animation, 
And I only have three butterflies here, but that's because I'm not going to be making the swarm. Desmond is going to be making the swarm uh, using expressions in After Effects, uh, as he can do anything we normal humans and graphic designers can do, but with numbers, which is even cooler. Uh, so here, I only did I only did uh, uh, three butterflies, uh, just getting essentially the main colors down. Oops, let me toggle this. Right. So you see the horde of butterflies here is comprised of uh, you know, a fully quote unquote detailed butterfly with uh, two different colors of wings and, and uh, another different colored body. Then a silhouette of a butterfly in the back, which is just a uh, uh, dark gray, dark bluish gray. And then another kind of butterfly, which is the, um, the two orange wings and the, I don't know if you can see it properly, but it's the bluish black body. So we only need those three elements to then be duplicated into infinity um, with expressions. So therefore that is the only thing the animator needs, and I don't need to make more duplicates. I don't need to overcomplicate things, right? So now after that, we bring in our hero butterfly, which has already been composited together. Uh, as you can see, I brought in the textures from After Effects, and I applied an alpha mat, right, with the body being the alpha mat, and then the texture using the information of the, um, of the body alpha. And now here, I redid these shapes so they could be more finely animated by Desmond. So yeah, so essentially in, in as far as Photoshop is concerned for the main body of the butterfly, uh, we didn't have, I didn't have to do much else uh, besides just applying the textures that I painted on Photoshop. And now you can see them in finer detail here. So now we add the second element that uh, was done in Photoshop, which is the um, finer glare. Oh, well, actually let me do that at the end because it's kind of a really nice detail that brings everything together at the end. Now I'm just gonna move in um, to adding the flowers, like so. We just start adding again the flowers. And now for the fun part. Okay, so these are the finishing effects that really help bring these this entire uh, design together. If we look back at the main frame, right, if you really glance in detail, you can see this very, very subtle cell shape pattern that inhabits the whole frame. And it's also present in all the other frames, right? It's like, not only do you have big circles and then smaller circles within the big circles, you also have tiny circles everywhere too. Just reinforcing that unifying idea that, you know, the biggest circle, from the biggest circle to the, to the, the small circle, everything is unified. So now, what did I do to uh, uh, replicate that cell pattern, right? So I'm turning it on here. There's actually two, three duplicates from the main duplicate. Uh, let's go into the into what is the main one. So this effect is really, really simple to recreate. Uh, it's called CC Ball Action. It's an innate plugin in After Effects. Uh, I brought, essentially first what you have to do is you have to create a solid. So let me just, for tutorial purposes, let me create a new solid and make it that color, right? So uh, let's see, let me copy. Right, let's do that. So if you see what this is, it's essentially just CC ball action with the ball size of this, um, of the effect tuned down to 40, right? Bigger ball size, bigger balls. It's not that, <laughs> it's not that, it's not that hard to grasp the concept. Um, but then the main thing here is the, the compositing of how, because if we, if we really, really look at this, um, look at this in depth, the pattern is not uniform all throughout right there's portions of it that are that are kind of uh, um erased out almost if, if you were to go with a with an eraser tool in photoshop and just you know erase certain parts and keep certain others as if the lighting is uh having its effect on the cell on the grid pattern as well right so how do we do that well simple just with masks right i try to you know imitate it as best as i could seeing it here like if you can see in in certain parts of the frame like here there is no cell pattern over here, there is no cell pattern. Over here, there is no cell pattern. So I just made a mask, right, where I didn't see any cell pattern and put each mask to subtract and then feathered it so you didn't see the hard edge of the mask coming in. And it's it's like nice and organic and it's, you know, it's mimicking and it's, it's integrating that light that is coming in from the sun. And then I duplicated that grid pattern with different effects. So you know, hard light for one, if you see it without hard light, you know, it's a little bit more uh, uh, washed out. I didn't want that, I wanted it to be more integrated. Then 
another one for screen with screen, let's bring out even more. This is without screen. So now you can see with screen, it brings out that light and makes that glare pop, right? And now let's see. And now we bring in the sun, right? Which essentially just is a big uh, light orange solid up here with a very, very wide feather of 212 pixels, right? And now there is one uh, finer detail missing, which if you can see, there is a very beautiful interaction of the glow of the sun hitting the edge of the butterfly, right? And uh, I, to get this right, I didn't find any particular way to do this in After Effects. So I went into Photoshop and I, uh, you know, I had the, the, the reference already done from Illustrator as well as the reference from Form to Nature. So I just painted over that reference and I brought that painted lighting onto this frame and added it using hard light. So as you can see here, when we add that, and this really, again, what it is, if you want to watch it. It's just um, a uh, the, the standard Photoshop brush uh, with zero percent hardness, just painting over it, you know, with a with a very very bright light yellow uh, orange color, right? Painting over the edge to sort of bring a highlight to it. And I also so we didn't we did, we didn't have like the the lighting come outside of the butterfly like that, right? I used I duplicated the whole butterfly hero body, right here, and used that as an alpha for the glow. Right, so now you can see how that beautiful glow just outlines the whole outer edge of the butterfly, and just it really makes that that one percent that ends up being a huge difference, right? As you can see, and now just to unify everything, right? We have uh, we add some basic, very basic color correction on top, which here I used a combination. Let me turn all of these off. So here for this for this color correction, I used a combination of hue and saturation to bring, uh, I brought the saturation up a little bit because as you can see, it was uh, from bringing it from Illustrator uh, and bring elements from Illustrator to Photoshop into After Effects, the color settings always change. Uh, it's kind of just an inevitable thing. So I just corrected everything to make it closer to, to the final image um, that I wanted. Uh, and I brought the saturation up a little bit to bring that like beautiful glow of spring, beautiful glow of, of, of blooming flowers, of, of butterflies and everything. Uh, brought up the brightness and contrast a little bit as well to really accentuate that sunlight as if we're looking at a sun in the early morning coming out of the clouds. And then the curves to bring those values down a little bit and balance the whole composition together. Yeah. So yeah, and there you have it. There is, the, there is how this whole composition uh, comes together. All right, and that uh, concludes this uh, design breakdown tutorial of this beautiful bright frame by uh, Chromosphere from their animation form to nature. Uh, it was a pleasure to deconstruct one of my favorite animations in motion design and also uh, one of the first animations I uh, ever saw as a motion designer, as a beginning motion designer. Uh, so yeah, this, this, this means a lot to me. It's, it's like breaking down one of your icons and just seeing uh, it's masterful ways and what it's really made of. So that's it. Um, thank you, Desmond. Thank you, No Sleep Creative. Uh, if you want to see more of my work, you can follow me on Instagram at Ness, that's N-E-S-S Tomaselli, T-O-M-A-S-E-L-L-I on my Instagram uh, to get some really, really cool motion design, animation, and sci-fi related stuff. So thanks, guys. That's it. Uh, all right. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, Nestor. And uh, thank you for you know doing this tutorial. And we'll see you next time, guys.